Never, ever do this. This video is for someone that has never played 2.6 Hog Cycle and wants to learn how to play it. We will not be going over specific matchups in this video, but we'll be going over a general idea of how to play this deck. In this video, we'll be talking about the deck, some basic strategy behind the deck, what to do in your opening hand, and at the end, I got some tips and tricks that hopefully you can use to win a couple of your first games. On to the deck. 2.6 Hog Cycle is probably one of the most popular decks in Clash Royale, and it's probably the hardest deck to master. Why? Well, you have these eight cards, and you will have to defend these 97 cards in any infinite amount of combinations that you may come across. Wow, sounds difficult. It, it is. <laughs> But don't get discouraged at first if you're having trouble defending with this deck because this is why the deck is so hard to master. Knowing how to defend every single push and how to defend it efficiently and correctly is where most of the skill of this deck comes from. So how are you going to take your opponent's tower? Well, for offense, you have the Hog Rider. Hog Rider is a very fast building targeting melee troop with moderately high hit points and moderately high damage. For defense, your main defensive units will be the Musketeer, the Cannon, and also the Ice Golem. But you'll be using every single card in this deck for not only offense, but in defense in every game you come across. But how are you going to use these cards, and what's the basic strategy of this deck? So what's the basic strategy of this deck? Well, you'll be playing your Hog. A lot. And hopefully your Hog will be able to smack your opponent's tower with his hammer. But then what? Now you're going to defend your opponent's counterattack. But how? Well, with your other cards in your deck. Trying to use your cheap elixir costing units to defend, like your ice spirit and your skeletons, is a great way to not only be efficient with your defense, but also to get the hog rider back in your hand quicker. And playing these cheap units and getting your hog rider back into your hand quicker, this is known as cycling. And that's why the deck is called Hog Cycle. Because it has this unique ability to be able to play the hog rider and also get it back into your hand very, very quickly. And once you have the hog rider in your hand, you can play it and then defend and then continue defending and then play your hog rider again and then defend and play your hog rider and 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 defend and play your hog rider. You will be doing this back and forth a lot, but if you do defend correctly and efficiently, you will eventually win the game. So what do you do in your opening hand? Well, if you have the hog rider in your opening hand, play it just just play it that's your best bet if you don't have the hog rider in your hand hopefully you have the ice spirit it's your second best play playing the ice spirit at the bridge is also a very very good play with this deck it either hits the tower and you get a little bit of chip damage or it forces your opponent to make the first move if you do not have the hog rider and the ice spirit in your opening hand the next best play would be to use the log at the bridge if you have none of these three options in your opening hand worst case scenario you can play the skeletons at the back the ice golem at the back or even the musketeer at the back i would try to avoid using the musketeer or the ice golem at the back to start off a game just because they're so crucial to your defense and you could get punished and now it's everybody's favorite time of the day it's tip time with cash and and, and this penguin of course because he's always here first tip i have for you guys today is to play your hog rider at the top left and right corner of the arena doing this allows the hog rider to jump over the river instead of walking across the bridge which is much faster also, the Hog Rider will be able to jump in front of units that are already crossing the bridge. The next tip I have for you guys is one of the most powerful defenses in the game, and that is the Ice Golem Kite. This is when you play the Ice Golem in the center of the arena, but a little on the opposite side of where your opponent's unit is coming down. Your Ice Golem will walk away, your opponent's unit will follow, and while it is following the Ice Golem, it will be not only getting hit by the right side tower, but also be getting hit by the left side tower, and it's a very, very powerful defense if used correctly. The next tip I have for you guys is to protect your musketeer if your musketeer has one hp left or full health it still is going to do 181 damage per shot so that means the more shots the musketeer gets the, the more value you get so making sure you always protect your musketeer when it's on your side of the arena and also playing a unit in front of it while it's crossing the bridge to make sure it gets as many shots as possible not only on your side of the arena but on your opponent's side of the arena so playing the hog rider to hop in front of the musketeer or playing the ice school and the ice spirit or even the skeletons in front of the musketeer is a very 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 it's a good play <laughs> Getting small amounts of damage on your opponent's tower throughout the entirety of the game is how you will win with this deck. Every hog hammer and musketeer shot adds up. 
Another way you'll be damaging your opponent's tower is with your spells. Using your spells to not only take out your opponent's units, but also be able to deal damage to your opponent's tower at the same time, even though it's not a lot of damage, it adds up very, very quickly. Also, spells are a great way for you to finish off your opponent. Because this deck has so many cheap elixir costing units, you're able to get to cards very, very quickly. This includes the Fireball, which you can play, cycle back to it very quickly, and play it again, and it's a great way to finish off games. Also, this is known as spell cycling. <laughs> The next tip I have for you guys is cannon placements. The cannon is such a crucial part to this deck and the overall defense of this deck, and knowing the correct cannon placement is key. For Hog and Ram Rider, you'll be playing the cannon here. You'll be playing it in the same lane as your opponent's unit is coming down, but in the middle. And for Golems and Giants, you'll be playing in the middle too, but a little further over, a little further over into the opposite side of your arena. Last, for Graveyard and Miner, you'll be playing your cannon beside your King Tower, but a little further up. This will not only enable your cannon to deal with units on your tower, but it'll also be able to protect your tower from enemy units coming across the bridge. The next tip I have for you guys is to put pressure on your opponents. Make sure you're always aggressive so your opponent is unable to build a big, big push. So example, if your opponent plays a Lava Hound or a Golem at the back, you know he's gonna go for this big, big attack, We'll go opposite lane with your hog, and if you even don't have your hog, play the ice golem and the skeletons just to force out some elixir on that side. Every elixir that you can force out on one side is less elixir your opponent will have to support their big push, or at least the push that they wanted to build on the other side. Putting pressure on your opponent is a great way to take control of the game, and overall, at the, hopefully at the end, just win the game. <laughs> The next tip I have for you guys goes alongside the previous tip, which is putting pressure on your opponent. And that is while you are defending, you can play your hog rider in the opposite lane. So if you're defending your opponent's push and you already have the cannon down, you have the musketeer down and the ice golem down, and you feel confident that you'll be able to defend this push successfully, well, while you're defending, you can play the hog if you have the elixir in the opposite lane. This is a great play because not only can you catch your opponent off guard, but it also forces your opponent to play elixir defensively. And this is elixir that they won't be able to use to support the push that you're currently defending. The last tip I have for you guys is a little more difficult, but it's crucial if you want to master this deck. This tip is to support your hog rider correctly. When you play your hog rider at the bridge, make sure you use the correct unit or, or in many situations, no unit at all. So if they defend your hog with a Skarmy or a Goblin Gang, using your log in this situation is a great way to support your hog rider. But let's say in another example, they use more swarm units or even maybe the bats or the minions. You can use your ice golem to not only protect your hog, but also deal some damage to these swarm units of your opponent. In another situation, if your opponent plays the P.E.K.K.A. or the mini P.E.K.K.A., using the ice spirit is a great way to help your hog maybe get an additional hit on the tower. You're going to face many different situations, but keeping this in mind and trying to find the best way to support your hog in a match is going to be the difference from you becoming a pro and be being a schmo. And there you have it. We are done diddly done. Done diddly done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, shout out to Yersin CR. He is a very, very, very good 2.6 hog ride. Hog ride or cycle. I don't know. He's a very good 2.6 hog cycle player. Here is his YouTube channel. And this is actually a channel I watch just to learn this deck myself so I can make this video. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, you smash like button and you hit the subscribe button and then you do a little dance and you get down to nine. Also, let me know in the comments below which deck you want me to make the starter guide for next. Is it Pekka Bridge Spam? Is it 2.9x? I already did a video on that, so I can't do that again. I could do it again, but I won't. If you want me to do a Golem deck, well, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys all have a fantastic, a fantastic dreamy day.